from the Corinium Chief Analytics Officer Conference, Spring, San Francisco. It's the Cube. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with the Cube. We're in downtown San Francisco at the Corinium Chief Analytics Officer. Uh, spring event, uh, we go to Chief Data Officer, this is Chief Analytics Officer, there's so much activity around big data and analytics, and this one is really focused on the practitioners. Relatively small event, and we're excited to have another uh, practitioner here today, and it's Kevin Bates. He's a VP of Enterprise Data Strategy Execution for Fannie Mae. Kevin, yeah. welcome. It's a mouthful, thank so you, you. Yeah, you got it all. You got, <laughs> you got strategy, which yeah. is good, and then you've got execution. That's and right. you've been at a big Fannie Mae for 15 years, according to your yeah. LinkedIn, so you've yeah. seen a lot of changes. So been give us kind of your perspective as this kind of train keeps rolling down the track. Okay, uh, yeah, so it's been a wild ride. I've been there, like you say, for 15 years. Uh, when I started off there, I was writing code, working on their underwriting systems, and I've been in different divisions, including the credit loss division, which had a pretty exciting couple of years yes, back around 2008. More exciting than you care to. <laughs> well, there was certainly a lot going on. Uh, data's been sort of a consistent theme throughout my career, so um, the data at Fannie Mae, not unlike most companies, uh, is really the blood that kind of keeps the entire uh, organism you know, functioning. So over the last few years, I've actually moved into the enterprise data division of the company, where I have responsibility for delivery, operations, platforms, the whole nine yards, and that's really given me kind of a unique view of what the company does. It's right. given me the opportunity to touch most of the different business areas and learn a lot about you know, what we need to do better. So how's the perspective changed around the data? Because before data was almost a liability because you had to store it uh, and keep it and manage it and yeah. take good care of it. Now really mm -hmm. it's, it's a core asset and as we see with valuations yep. up and down mm -hmm. 101, probably the driver of some of the crazy valuations that you yeah. see in a lot of the companies. So, How's that attitude changed and what have you done to kind of take advantage of that shift in attitude? Sure, it's uh, a great question. Um, so I think the data has always been the lifeblood and, and the key ingredient to success for the company, but the techniques of managing the data have changed for sure. And with that, the culture has to change and how you think about the data has to change. So if you go back 10 years ago, all of our data was stored in our data center, which means that we had to pay for all those servers and every time data kept uh, getting bigger, we had to buy more servers and it almost became like a bad thing, right? right that's what I say, almost uh, a liability. That's right, and, and as we've, you know, certainly, you know, started adopting the cloud and the technologies associated with the cloud, you may step into that thinking, okay, now I don't have to manage my own data center, I'll let Amazon or whoever do it for me. But it's much more fundamental than that because as you uh, start embracing the cloud, and now storage is no longer a limitation, and compute is no longer a limitation. The numbers of tools that you use is no longer really a limitation. So as an organization, you have to change your way of thinking from, I'm going to limit the number of business intelligence tools that my users can, can uh, take advantage of, to how can I support them to use whatever tools they want. Right, right. So the mentality around the data, I think, really goes to, how can I make sure the right data is available at the right time, with the right quality checks that everybody can say, yep, I can hang my hat on that data, but then get out of the way and let them self-serve from there. Right. It's very challenging, there's a lot of new tools and technologies involved, but that's really the And change. that's a huge piece of the whole innovation game, right? Yeah. Is have, have the right data for the right people, with the right tools, and let right. more people play with it. Right. But you've got this other pesky thing like governance. Right. Um, <laughs> you've got well, a lot of legal restrictions and, mm -hmm. and regulations and right. compliance issues. So how do you fold that into kind of <clears throat> opening up the, uh, the, the, yeah. the goodies, if you will? So I, I think uh, one, one effort we have is we're building a platform we call the Enterprise Data Infrastructure. So. For that 85% of data at Fannie Mae, what we do is loans, we create securities from the loans, and then there's liabilities, and you know there's some income, and there's a few things. There's a pretty finite set of data areas that are pretty much consistent at Fannie Mae, and everybody uses those data sets. So taking those and calling them enterprise data sets that will be centralized, they will be uh, presented to uh, our customers in a uniform way with all the data quality checks in place. Um, that's a big effort. It means that you're standardizing your data, you're performing a consistent data quality approach on that data, and then you're making it available through uh, any number of consumption patterns. So that could be applications needed, so I'm integrating applications. It could be warehousing, analytics, 
but it's the same data and it comes from that promise that we've tagged it enterprise data and we've done all that good stuff to make sure that it's uh, that it's good, that it's healthy, that we know where we stand. Right, so if right. it's not a good data set, we know how to how to tag it and make it make it such. For all the other data around, um, you know, we have to let our business partners be accountable for how they're enriching that data and innovating and so forth. But governance is not a. It it is. I think in the past, another uh, part of your question, you know. Governance used to be more of a slow everybody down. But if we can incorporate governance and have implied governance in the platform and then allow the customers to self-serve off of that platform, governance becomes really that universal good, that thing that allows you to be confident that you can take the data and innovate with right, that data. Right. Yeah. So I'm curious how much of the, of the value add now comes from the not enterprise data, the outside the core, which you've had forever. Yeah. I, I mean, how, I don't know if you know, have a, have a hard number, but yeah. what's kind of the increasing importance and the increasing overlay of that exterior data onto your yeah. enterprise data to drive more value out of yeah. the enterprise data? So, so that enterprise data, like I say, you know, maybe the 85%, it's just the facts. Right, right. These are the loans we brought in, here's how we can aggregate risk, or we can aggregate um, what we call UPB, or like the, the value of our, our loans. Um, that is pretty generic and it's intended to be. The third party data sets that our business partners may bring in, that they bump up against that data, can give them strategic advantages. Um, also, the data that those businesses um, generate, our business lines generate within their local applications, which we would not call enterprise data, that's very much their special sauce right. and something that the broader organization doesn't need. Those things are all the, really what our data scientists and our, and our business people combined to create the value added reports that they use for decisioning and so forth. Right, yeah. and then I'm curious um, kind of how the, the the big data and the analytics environment has changed from the old day where you had, had some mm -hmm. some PhDs and some really super yeah. bright guys that ran really super hard right. algorithms right. and it was on mahogany row and you mm -hmm. know you put in a request and maybe from down high someday <laughs> you'll get your yeah. request yeah. versus really trying to enable a much broader set of analysts to, to have access to that data uh -huh. uh, with a much broader set of tools, as you yeah. said, enabling a bunch of tools versus picking kind of the one or two winners mm -hmm. that are very expensive, you got to limit the seats, et cetera. That's right. I mean, how's that changed kind of the culture of the company as well as the way that you were able to deliver mm -hmm. products and deliver um, new applications, right. Right. if you will? So I, I think that's a work in progress, I have to, I have to say. Um, we have, uh, we still have all the PhDs and they still really call the shots. They're the ones that get the call from the, the executive vice president and they want to see something today that tells them what decision they should make. We have to enable them. They were enabled in the past by having people basically hustle to get them what they need. The big change we're trying to make now is to present the data in a common platform where they really can take it so a lot, and, and run with it. So there is a change in how we're delivering our systems to make sure that we have the lowest level of granularity, that we have real-time data, there's no longer waiting. And the technology you know, tools that have come out in the last 10 years have really enabled that, so it's really just about implementing that, making it available to all those PhDs. Okay. There's another population of analysts that is now empowered where they were not before. The guys that suffered just using Excel or like access databases right. that were the, I would call them, not the power users, but kind of the empowered analysts, the ones who, they know the data, they know right. how to query right. data, but they're not hardcore quants and they're not developers. Those guys have access to a plethora of tools now um, that were never available before that allow them to wrangle data from 20 different data sets, align it, ask questions of it, and they're really focused on operations and just you know running, running our systems uh, in a smoother and lower cost way. So I think the, the granularity, the timing, and support for that kind of explosion of tools while we'll still have the big heavy SaaS and R users that are the quants that, you know, um, I think that's the combination. It's sort of everything has to be supported. Right. And we'll support it better with higher quality, with more, more recent data. But uh, the, the culture change isn't going to happen even in a few years. It'll be a longer term path for uh, large organizations to really see maybe possibilities where they can restructure themselves based on technology. Uh, right now, the technologies are early enough and young enough that I think they're going to wait and see. Right. Well, I was going to say because because obviously you guys have a ton of legacy systems yeah. and you know you've got all these tools, but mm -hmm. you've got that core set, as you said, your enterprise right. data that doesn't really change that much. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. 
I mean, what's what's the objective kind of down the road? Are you looking to expand on that core set? <clears throat> Is that just <clears throat> such a, a fixture that you just can't yeah. do anything with it in terms of flexibility? I mean, yeah. where where do you go from here? If we if we were sure. to sit down three years from now, yeah. what are we going to be talking about? So two things. One, I hope I'll be looking back with. Uh, with excitement at my huge success in <laughs> transforming those legacy systems. In particular, we have what we call the legacy warehouses that have been around well over 20 years that are limited and have not been updated because we've been trying to uh, retire them for many years. Folding all of that into my core enterprise data infrastructure that will uh, be fully aligned on terminology, on near real time, all of those things, that will be a huge success. I'll be looking back and glowing about how we did that. Excellent. And now we've empowered the business with that core data set that is uniquely available on this platform. They don't need to go anywhere else to find it. The other thing I, I think we'll see is enabling analysts to uh, utilize cloud-based assets um, and really be successful working both with our on-premises data center, you know, our own data center supported applications, but also starting to move their uh, heavy running uh, quantitative modeling and all the sorts of things they do into the data lake, uh, which will be cloud-based, and really enabling that as a true kind of empowerment for them so that they can use a different set of tools, they can move all of that kind of heavy lifting and the servers that they sometimes bring down right now, you know, move it into an environment where they can really manage their own performance. Uh, I think those are going to be the two big changes three years from now that, that will uh, feel like we're in kind of the next generation. All right, Kevin Bates projecting the future. <laughs> so we look forward to that day and uh, yeah, thanks too. for taking a few minutes out of your day. <laughs> Thank you. All right, thanks. Appreciate All right, he's it. Kevin, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE <laughs> from the Corinium Chief Analytics Officer event in San Francisco. Thanks for watching.